I find that working and learning is both rewarding and unsettling. It's great to make a difference, but sometimes it's hard to figure out if you're really making a difference or if it just feels that way. In that respect, being a learning professional is a lot like being a psychotherapist. Great things may well be happening in those precious moments, but does it really work? Is there a science to it? To put it bluntly, I don't think we really know what we're doing because we don't have a clear picture of how learning works. Sure, there's no shortage of learning theories, but these are mostly discredited, or in my own experience, don't actually work. So I'd like to introduce the effective context model and look at how it explains some of the familiar aspects of learning, as well as some things which haven't been explained so far. The main problem we have with learning is that we tend to think about it as knowledge transfer. Somehow, information goes from the book to the head, or from the book to the teacher's head, and then to the students. Eventually, somebody says, well, why don't we just cut out the teacher, spice up the book with some quizzes and pictures, put it online, and call it e-learning. And then people scratch their heads when they discover that people like e-learning less than classroom learning, even though it's more effective, given that neither are very effective at all. And it's very odd. The starting point for untangling the model is realising that people don't function like computers and learning isn't knowledge transfer. Recent research is revealing a picture of the human mind which is very different from the computational models of the 70s. It turns out that whilst a tiny part of the brain is broadly rational, it sits like the tip of an iceberg on a vastly more powerful area which works very differently and which makes decisions based on what feels right. It's complex and it's sophisticated and it's how grandmasters beat chess computers. But the fact that we only know it as gut instinct shows how little we know about it. How does this relate to learning? Well, think back to your school days. What do you remember? I'm guessing school dinners, friends, great teachers, terrible ones, lessons where something odd happened. According to the effective context model, when human beings learn things, they wrap or tag the knowledge with its effective context, things that matter. These things aren't just emotional in an obvious sense. For example, they might include how excited the person you're watching is, or how similar to you they are, or how much they care about you. What I'm saying is that as you live your life, your brain is constantly cataloguing the world around you, attaching effective significance to things depending on how important they are to you. And you have limited control over this. For example, if you witness a fight between colleagues, you'll probably remember this for a long time, whilst you may struggle to remember the details of the latest budget spreadsheet. Effective context is just shorthand for saying all those things your brain deems to be significant about a situation or object, expressed as emotions, and over which you have limited control. Once again, think of how subtle these judgments have to be to allow a chess grandmaster to glance at one chess configuration out of millions and judge whether it's good or bad. Without effective context, knowledge doesn't stick. It just passes through us like a cherry stone. So let's apply this to learning. This graph should be familiar. The pattern was first picked up by Ebbinghaus around 1885 and dubbed the forgetting curve. And it's pretty much what happens with any formal learning. Classrooms, online courses, you forget almost all the stuff almost immediately. But we continue to teach people like this. And that's very strange. Fortunately, since pretty much nothing is actually learned in this way, there's another learning process at work, and it looks like this. This is informal learning. How we learn naturally. Typically, informal learning is a response to a challenge, like starting a new job, for example. And that's why people talk about a steep learning curve. The first type of learning is push learning, and the latter, informal, is pull learning. The reason that formal learning works so badly is that there's no effective context. Organisations or institutions roll out this kind of learning as a preparation for something that's going to happen in future. And the learner's brain doesn't really understand why it's effectively important right now. In such cases, 
it would make more sense to focus on providing the effective context rather than pushing the knowledge. In the case of informal learning, the learner already has the effective context, so they pull the knowledge. If you don't learn quickly, your colleague is going to be laughing at you. So far, so good. But how does the effective context model explain some of the other findings in learning and memory? You can picture an experience as a network of elements, each of which have varying degrees of effective context, shown here as red spikes. Stuff with low effective context doesn't stick. It quickly fades from memory. So, for example, you might remember the day at work when you argued with your boss, but you probably struggle to remember what happens on a regular day. An interesting exception to this is flashbulb memories, people's tendency to have vivid recollections of moments that are highly emotionally charged, such as what they were doing when they heard of the death of Princess Diana. The model also explains the formation of scripts, schemas, and episodic memory. When we do things repeatedly, a common pattern of effective activation emerges. The incidental stuff just fades away. Unless, of course, it's especially charged. So, for example, if you do the same train journey every day, you'll struggle to remember the journey on a specific day. But you have a kind of averaged memory for what happens. If one day a fight breaks out on the train, you'll remember this for some time. And if you're asked about the whole journey, you will add this vivid memory to your generalised schema for your train journey to create this episode. This same effect can be seen in a number of ways. In Bartlett's famous War of the Ghosts experiment, researchers looked at what elements of a story survive the retelling. Unsurprisingly, it was the more emotionally charged aspects that remained, whilst the specific words used varied. Another area of support for the model comes from distinctiveness and levels of processing theories. Levels of processing suggest that we remember information better when we spend more time thinking about it and making connections. But the theory can't explain the fact that information which is merely visually distinctive, such as seeing somebody catch on fire, is far better remembered. But both findings are consistent with the effective context model. Finally, recent research into the ways in which failure can enhance subsequent learning are also consistent. Failing at something primes us to learn via the dopamine system, which in turn sensitises us to effective aspects of the situation. Expectation failure, a Piagetian concept, works. And now we know why. Failure and fear of failure a powerful emotional contexts. So what does this mean for delivering learning? A great deal. First and foremost, it means that we should look for opportunities to deliver resources instead of courses. In other words, to respond to pull rather than pushing, providing people with the learning that they really need to do things that they really care about. But of course, sometimes people don't care about things when we want them to. So the role of the educator is to encourage people to care by being passionate, by being credible and persuasive and by finding ways to connect with people at a personal level. Educators inspire and motivate people, building their confidence and making things matter. If an educator can create an effective context, the learner will do the learning. It means less time spent explaining to people why something is important and more time spent trying to figure out how to make something feel important. A flight simulator is designed to feel real. That's why it works. It means that we should look at delivery mechanisms that combine the effective context with the knowledge rather than stripping it away. We should use video to capture enthusiasm along with a message. Use stories, scenarios and simulation to preserve the significance. Finally, learning should never be about abstracting information, except when we're providing reference materials for people we know, need and want them. Learning should deliberately mix effective elements, such as context, anecdotes, consequences and personal impact, in a way which connects with learners' concerns.